Okay, this video is the second in a series regarding the bug out vehicle. In the first video, I explained how to construct a survival compartment within the trunk of a sedan style vehicle. Now let's go over the organizational layout. I essentially divided this area into sections based on function and purpose. On the left, we have a three day supply of water and food. Up here over the spare tire, we have emergency clothing, toiletries, and cotton towels. Here on the right, we have sleeping gear for two people. Over here, we have both a small collapsible umbrella and a military grade rain poncho. And here are the items for vehicle based maintenance and minor repairs. Along with that, we have a car jack with iron and an emergency spare tire as well. Here's 100 feet of decently strong utility rope for tying down items and what have you. And here's a mobile medical trauma bag. The best thing I like about this bag is its versatility. It functions as both a first responder kit as well as an everyday discomfort bag as well. And we'll be getting into the content of this bag a little later on. And here we have the urban survival bag as well. Again, we'll look into its contents in just a bit. Now, what about the functional purpose of this compartment? You may be asking that. Well, I want to define that for you. Now, you know that I created the survival compartment primarily for my wife, yes, but what was the operational philosophy behind its creation? Well, here it is. It is to provide my wife with the survival capacities necessary to ensure both their safety and sustainability for a period of up to three days or longer if necessary. And now, what are the expressed goals? I want her to be able to regroup and rebound from a crisis situation as quickly as feasibly possible. And once she's on her feet, I need her to reunite on my location. In this way, the integrity of our team, along with all our team-based training, remains intact. Remember, always keep the team together, or at least in the process of coming together, whenever possible. Okay, let's Let's look at the food and water here. As you would expect, I chose MRE specifically because of their ready-to-eat design. But remember, during the hot summer months, the expiration dates lessen significantly. So we change these out yearly on a recurring schedule. And here's a list of items found here for one person. Again, remember, this food here can easily be stretched out to five days if necessary. For water, we use BPA-free Nalgene bottles. Now we have three 32 ounces in this location here and more under the front car seats. Now if you're going to copy this design, you use what's best for you. Let's look at the emergency clothing and toiletry here. Here we have vacuum seal packs of three specific items. First, a field jacket liner for my wife. The ALS 92 here comes in many sizes and tactical colors, and you can get them from aviationclothing.com. Now, for extra cold scenarios, we have an Under Armour Cold Gear Base 3 top, as well as the leggings that go with that. Same thing for me, an ALS 92 field jacket liner and an Under Armour Cold Gear Base 3 top, and the leggings that go with it as well. Here's an extra sweater for my my wife to use on cold nights. And here is a zippered bag with toiletries for a few nights, just in case my wife or I are forced to stay with a network partner. It has a toothbrush, toothpaste, dental floss, soap, razor, deodorant, shampoo and conditioner, toilet paper, and feminine napkins. Wells Lamont gloves here, his and hers, a roll of toilet paper, two cotton towels for showers, and an extra sweater for me in case of a cold night as well. On the right underside here, we have our sleeping gear. Now we use Recon 3s in both our bug out bags as well as in the car. They've got a decent rating and they condense down to a very small size. Now during the spring and summer months, we keep assorted snacks here for quick energy, especially for my wife who gets a little grumpy if she doesn't have something in her system. Now in the winter and fall months, we augment our survival capacity by adding a jet boil cooking system right here. In the center here we have a flexible bicycle lock, good for a variety of uses, jumper cables here, and a small tool set complete with ratchet sockets specifically for this car plastic squeeze bottles of Windex and Armor All, and a collapsible safety cone. And here are the two main bags. They open up like this for full accessibility. Now let's look inside the urban survival bag. In the front flap here we have a map, complete set of batteries, a road flare, and a safety red flag. On the right side pocket we have a small DC to AC power adapter. Here's a garage door opener to my in-laws home. In this zipper here we have a battery free flashlight, some Advil, Tylenol, a small cotton towel for checking the car's oil level, a flashlight, a notepad and pen, and some feminine napkins again. On the back pocket we have a quart of full synthetic oil and a tire gauge. 
on the inside upper pocket we have some safety pins, wet ones and a place for spare change. Now thirty dollars in small bills and six bucks in change stays in here at all times. You'd be surprised how many times we've had to use this. And here is a red colored wand which attaches to our Phoenix LD20 flashlights which we carry on our EDCs. But that's for another video. In the main compartment we have some tire sealant, a dusk mask, a spoon, two extra cotton towelettes, and 30 feet of paracord. In this organizer we have four wet ones, two cord clamps, one tissue packet, one hand warmer, three tie wraps, a little paracord, some hair bands, spare batteries, a sharpie pen and marker, $20 bill sealed for emergencies only, waterproof matches, two glow sticks, a P38 can opener, an emergency whistle, a spare camera memory stick, two cell phone batteries fully charged, a spare car beeper battery, some spare earbuds for the road, and a spare battery for our camera. Okay, let's move on to the medical trauma kit. We're going to go fast here, so pause the video as necessary. In this front pocket, I have a suture kit, along with some needles and syringes for administering local anesthesia. Some tie wraps, some more Stay Alert gum, some hydrogen peroxide here, and some Vaseline. Now I just threw this kit together with some spare instruments. I'll most definitely work on it a little more when I have some more time. In this front zipper we have a lighter, a notepad, and a pen. On this right side pocket we have some poison ivy implements. On this left side pocket an ace bandage and some medical tape. And in the back pocket a 500 milliliter IV bag with tube and catheter. Now I've started at least a hundred IVs in the most weirdest places on earth. One time on an eight year old girl around two in the morning during a wild thunderstorm. Her father who was a drunk had somehow nearly chopped his little girl's entire left thumb off. When my special forces team members brought her to me, she was crying hysterically and her father was shouting obscenities. Now, once we stabilized her, we were able to save the use of her thumb by reattaching the flesh and skin over what remained of her thumb bone. I stayed up the entire night with that little girl and I still remember her to this day. She was a little scared, yes, but she was okay in the morning when we finally turned her over to a very, very grateful mother. Okay, up here we have safety pins. On this inside upper pocket we have heavy duty scissors, assorted band-aids and moleskin, a heat patch, some nitro gloves, a small flashlight, and a space blanket. In this part of the main section we have two cotton towels, some compressed gauze, here's a couple of gauze rolls, a cold pack, some good rehydration salts, some water gel pre-soaked burn dressings, some quick clot here, and here's a cinch tight. It's vacuum sealed here but it opens up to an 8x10 absorbent pad and it comes with a tension hook for easy anchoring and attachment. Now in these two organizers we have some more common everyday discomfort medicines, over-the-counter stuff. Here's some wet ones, Benadryl capsules for allergies, allergies, Imodium, an anti-diarrheal, some Dr. Schultz herbal formula number one, maximum strength. If you're constipated, this stuff will get you going and fast. Some multivitamins, some electrolyte replacement powder, a Sharpie pen and Sharpie marker, some Squincher electrolyte powder, Alka-Seltzer tablets, Tums, Tylenol PM, some Claritin for allergies, Ricola for cough suppression, Chapstick, and finally Visine. In this organizer we have Ibuprofen, Tylenol, earplugs, here is some cortisone 10 cream and this is a cortisone 10 applicator stick, some antifungal spray, toenail clippers, tweezers, some neosporin, assorted needles and syringes, and some q-tips here with some packaged tincture. Okay, that about does it. I know that was a lot of gear, so I want to thank you for hanging with me through it all. Again, the primary functional purpose of this compartment is to provide my wife with the capacities necessary for both her safety and sustainability for a period of up to three days and hopefully longer if necessary. She and I can then regroup and reunite back on our primary location. And finally, guys, here's a demonstration of my wife using the finished product. Okay, this is Analytical Survival, and stay safe, my brothers and sisters.